The day is June 13th. The E3 2017 has hit the second half of the expo with this year's Nintendo conference. Many impressive games have been announced that day, but the game who go one of the biggest comebacks was the confirmation of Metroid Prime 4 for the Nintendo Switch. In this video, you'll see what could imply the release of this game as a new hope for the Prime series, and we will discuss how fit a game of this caliber can be for the Nintendo Switch. Receiving what's arguably the best reception in the history of the franchise. Please, please, I heard that music. Please, please tell me it's Metroid Prime 4. Oh my god! Yes! 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 I'm Johnny, and we welcome you to our Game Dev channel. Let's begin. What? No! Before we can start talking about Metroid Prime 4, we first need to understand the situation in which we are currently in. The year is 2015. Many Metroid fans were waiting for the release of a new game for the franchise, as it had been 5 years after the latest game, Metroid Other M had struck down onto the community of players' expectations. You have to trust me, just give me a chance! <laughs> The E3 of that year announced the game Metroid Prime Federation Force to be released on the Nintendo 3DS platforms the following year. The release received a huge backlash from fans as the game didn't seem to contain at first anything for the classic formula of the Metroid series, with over 25,000 dislikes in the first day of its announcement. Eventually, the game was a commercial failure upon its release on 2016. Things started to look dire for the franchise, as the last standalone game of the franchise, which sold over 1 million copies, dated almost 10 years back, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption being released in 2007. I personally am a huge fan of the Metroid Prime trilogy. I grew up with the series, and I've played the first game over 10 times, and all those times I never got bored of playing over and over again. Hey. Even the game project we are currently working on has some spiritual inspiration from the trilogy. Although I did enjoy Metroid Ram and didn't get to buy Metroid Prime Federation Force, I was sure that Metroid Saga was a downfall. Something like this has already happened with the franchise, skipping the Nintendo 64 entirely, other than Samus' appearance in Super Smash Bros., with a 7 year gap from Super Metroid for SNES until Metroid Prime for the GameCube and Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance. Fast forward to this year's E3 and the announcement of Metroid Prime 4 and Metroid Samus Returns. We'll discuss about the latter in the next video. Since then, the game has received a global euphoric reaction when the video game was officially announced. No, Metroid! No, no, 4! No, Metroid! No! No! Is that, no, no, that? No, it's a big number 4! It's a 4! It's a 4! with the logo of the game! But, will the game meet the hype and expectations of the gaming community? Let's have a look at all the information we have at hand and see how well might the game perform. Up to this date, we don't have much information about the game. Let's see, we know the game is called Metroid Prime 4, and it's not going to be developed by Retro Studios like in the last three games and it's going to be released for the Nintendo Switch. That's it. This is... not much. But we can start making some speculations from this. It's hard to speculate about who is going to develop this game, as news mentioned that it is a new team of developers. Although, there are a couple of possibilities that I have on my mind. The first one might sound familiar to some of you, as it's the one that's behind many recent Nintendo games, 
access to solidity is mentioned Dark Moon, Minus Tiger's Charge, and of course, Major Prime Federation Force. I'm talking about next level games, and it seems likely that they might be working on this game, as during 2014, the company will work exclusively for Nintendo, and has already access to many Nintendo code properties. The second one is a team that branched off from Retro Studios after a few key developers from the studio left in 2007 after the release of Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. This new team, our Metroid Studios, hasn't worked by itself in a Metroid game, but some of the developers within the company have already got experience from developing the Metroid Prime trilogy. The catch with this possibility, however, is that Armature is already working on porting a game called Bloodstain, Ritual of the Night for the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation Vita. And with such a small team, it seems unlikely that I'll be working on more projects. But of course, there's always a possibility of a brand new team eager to make their debut with this game. Let us know in the comments which dev team you think is behind the development of Metroid Prime 4. Moving on, we know that the game is going to be released for the Nintendo Switch. Although this is just a statement, we can get a lot of information from this. The first thing that comes to me when talking about Metroid Prime 4 for the Switch are the controls. At first glance, it seems like the game fits perfectly for a motion control scheme, similar to the one used in Metroid Prime 3 Corruption and the Metroid Prime Trilogy Bundle. The motion control of the Joy-Con R could serve for aiming and moving the camera to like in Corruption and the Joy-Con L could be used the same way the Nacho was used in the same game for the Grapple Lasso. As for the buttons, the A, B, X, Y, Z could have the same standard actions used in the original Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Shooting, jumping, turning into Morpho, and launching missiles respectively. The plus and minus buttons could be utilized for the game interface, such as toggling the map and the game menu. The D-pad can be used for quickly selecting between four bindings like in the original Prime 1 and 2, and the analog stick of the Joy-Con R for switching between the beams available in the game. The L, R, ZL, and ZR buttons will probably be used for the locking feature that is predominant in the Prime trilogy. This control setup is ideal for the TV and tabletop mode, and not for the handheld mode. For the handheld mode, instead of more Hunter's flavor will be used instead. And let's not forget about the Pro Controller, which may bring back the traditional Metroid Prime control scheme. But there must be any other different possibilities. Let us know in the comments if you come up with one. In terms of graphical power, Metroid has always been very demanding with it since Super Metroid back in 1994 in order to create recognizable landscapes with a hefty amount of detail. Metroid Prime Hunters, launched on the early stages of the Nintendo DS, still looks so good compared to Metroid Prime, which was launched around the same time period in GameCube's lifetime, in part because of the graphical power of the GameCube. Nintendo Switch's GPU should provide Metroid Prime 4 enough power to make scenarios at least one and a half times as realistic as the ones in Big 3. But the graphic power isn't enough to give the game a good look. What ultimately makes the game look beautiful or ugly are the aesthetics of the game. Which is basically the graphical style. While Pikmin 3 is very realistic and uses quite a good portion of the graphical power of the Wii U, it focuses a lot more in small organic elements rather than large structure elements. Plants, water, fruit, and even decomposed trash. Metroid has maintained a graphical style since Super Metroid of extreme detail in all what's around the player, without actually trying to make it realistic. Instead, it tries its best to give an alien organic look to the environment, even if it's completely artificial. And sometimes it tries to give non-organic features on certain creatures like Thardus or Metarilli. Detailing the world in a concise way will also make the journeys of Metroid Prime 4 very enjoyable, which is one of the main pillars of the franchise. This has been achieved in Metroid Prime Trilogy lots of times, so there's no way that the Switch can handle smooth and natural transitions between two areas. 
There's also the fact that Nintendo Switch is arguably the fastest selling console in Nintendo's history, which may contribute to helping sales. But surely, what may probably skyrocket sales is the tsunami of hype that has struck recently on the community. However, this will only happen if the game actually turns out to be good. The consequences could get horribly wrong if the game doesn't fulfill everybody's expectations. In conclusion, Metroid Prime 4 has arrived at the right time at the right console. Now it is time for the game to come nice and shiny and revive the franchise. Thank you for watching, and we hope you to see you again.